Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, well this is the last one for this go around. Again, based on your past suggestions, I was taking a look at all my videos that I just did recently, and I did do a good amount of Cryptids and Monsters videos, a total of 13, and then some special edition ones as well, like Cryptids of the Week and then some other stuff too. So thank you so much for your suggestions. I'll probably start a new series again here just in a couple of weeks in the meantime I'll start working again on urban legends ghosts and spirits and then also the aliens and UFOs which I haven't done in quite some time so be on the lookout for that stuff too this suggestion came about I think a little over two years or so ago we're gonna go back to a sea serpent type monster and this one actually is here somewhere in northern America so going back I guess about two years ago that's when this particular cryptid was suggested what's fascinating about it is it pretty much rivals in terms of known sightings to the infamous Loch Ness monster there have been hundreds of sightings apparently around 300 plus sightings or so of this creature within the past 200 years and if you are to believe some of the carcasses that have been obtained of this creature then we actually have physical proof of it as well it's not quite a hundred percent yet because a lot of the things could be dismissed as other creatures and I'll talk about that here in a few minutes but still it definitely is uh, interesting information in terms of how much evidence there could be at the very least and what I'm talking about is this cryptid that's known as the Cadbosaurus but it has an affectionate nickname known as Caddy which you're looking at a picture of here so it is pretty much the northern American version of the Loch Ness monster in the sense that it pretty much resembles it um, but in, in a much looser way like in other words this is truly a giant sea serpent emphasis on the serpent that's how his body looks like one gigantic serpent kinda like how you had those old-time drawings of I guess like the Vikings and people that were traveling within the seas how they would usually depict the serpent as a gigantic snake with those coils going up and down very same concept but here this is with the Cadbosaurus so what is the Cadbosaurus or Caddy again Caddy is a gigantic sea monster of sorts that's found in in this case the Cadboro Bay towards British Colombian towards the British Colombian coast that's why it's called the Cadbosaurus because of its location the Cadboro Bay it's been described as being a giant serpent like creature with these weird flippers um, and you're looking at some of the drawings that it showcased it seems like it has these webbed flippers that are almost fused together but they create almost like a like a fan almost like a real fan of some sort perhaps making it easier to ensure that it can move around it also has a very long neck its entire body is again in the form of a serpent and then its most distinct feature seems to be its head it's been described as being either a horse like head or a camel like head and then based on various interpretations some people say that there are these vertical I guess spikes of some sort that come across its back others interpret it as not having that it's just based I guess on who whatever has the the experience with this creature but otherwise yes again think of your average sea serpent a uh, stereotypical sea serpent from the olden times and that is this in other words the Cadbosaurus tales of it being encountered have been going on for quite some time more recently though there has been uh, more modern tales 1900s plus that showcase uh, photographic proof again if you can believe it um, some of the most um, I guess most re more recent sightings in the 1900s have to do with some police officers two of them inspector Robert Owens and staff sergeant Jack Russell the way they described it was there in that portion of the sea they saw a quote-unquote huge sea serpent with a horse-like head and then also one of them had a pair of binoculars in this case uh, the guy Jack Russell and that's when he saw that this thing, whatever it was, it was hurting a sea, uh, like a six, 
I guess, six group member of Sea Lions. It seemed like it was actually hurting them, who knows where exactly, but it was doing something in terms of, of making them group together. So very interesting stuff um, it, it was it was fascinating to see that they now we had two police officers seeing this creature whatever this monster was which is not easy to dismiss because obviously police officers seem to be much more in terms of a heralded position within a community they're not prone to making exaggerations so something along those lines um, it, it definitely stands out um, as far as other known encounters there was one that stood out it had to do with a carcass that was found but not the carcass itself of this creature but instead where it was found so there was a group of what do they call those um, the people that hunted for whales that captured a whale and and they were using it of course to obtain the materials from it to get the oil to get whatever else is needed from this creature but then inside it that's when they found something curious they found an actual carcass of some sort in fact you're looking at the picture of it here this was in 1937 and when they brought back that that whale to the whaling station they removed the stomach contents and that's when they came across this it was described as being 20 foot long and it was a completely unidentified creature of some sort. It too had the distinct head of a horse, a snake-like body, and then a finned spiny tail. This is the only known photograph, by the way, of this thing, whatever it was that was found within it. Uh, who knows whatever happened to the remains, it would have been fascinating to have kept it. Um, even in some kind of formaldehyde or somewhere else, something that would have preserved it. But no, it was completely just gone thereafter. Who knows where it's at now. But this is one of the closest proofs yet as to its existence, which kind of creates an interesting scenario when you think about it. Here you have this creature, which could be an ultimate predator of sorts, and then it itself was either beaten or uh, something happened but it was eaten altogether by the whale and that's where it was found within its stomach quite quite interesting stuff another encounter took place another two years later there was a guy by the name of Captain Paul Sowerby and this is his exact description he said we were heading north and about 30 miles offshore we saw this thing standing about four feet out of the water so I headed over towards it took a look at it and at first I thought it looked like a polar bear something that had some kind of ruffles of hair but when we got up right alongside it and the water was crystal clear keynote on that because that again gives you an idea how much everything stood out like it wasn't there wasn't anything uh, that was creating a distraction of some sort in the water no the water was completely crystal clear he continues there was just this column of this thing going at least 40 feet with some huge eyes I had an old Newfoundlander as a mate and he said do you see eyes on him mouth and nose I have no correct recollection at all just those great big eyes and then the eyes seemed to open from top to bottom so in this case this was directly from a captain of a of a of a vessel so again another i guess you could call it notable citizen within the usual uh, township there cut to a couple of years later 1953 10 people 10 a uh, good large group good of them a good large group all of them saw this creature whatever it was within their point of view and what was interesting to note is that every single one of them gave the same description thereafter. So if one or two or maybe four could give all the description exactly the same, that would be pretty fascinating. But here, ten of them, all of them uh, were all the same. None of them contradicted one another. Now, as things get a little murky, a couple of years later, these two encounters that I'm about to explain are a little bit more murkier. Um, there was a person, W. Hagelund. They stated that in August of 1968, they claimed to have caught a baby caddy somewhere near the Corsi Island. And then also in July 1991, a couple of decades later, there was another person uh, named Phyllis Harsh who claims to have caught a, also a small baby caddy, in this case two foot long, but they returned it back to the water. So I'm kind of uh, a little hesitant on those because you would think if you come across something like this, 
that the natural inclination is to try to capture it safely to show proof maybe you might have something this discovery of the century when it comes to something like this so the fact that these two people presumably either both of them gave them back to the sea or one of them did at least it kind of makes you hesitate just a tiny little bit now earlier I was mentioning that there's a lot of things that could explain away what this Cadborosaurus is or caddy is um, in one case it could be some sea lions apparently the way that they migrate together going up and down and in a group within the sea if you're looking at the sea at a certain angle and you happen to catch that group right at that very moment it could look like the coils of a giant sea serpent especially if let's say the lead sea lion maybe just poked its head up and then the rest are going up and down in the sea uh, right from the top of the of the water to underneath and then to the top and then underneath that it makes it look like a sea lion that's one interpretation others point to it being none other than just a giant or fish which you're looking at a picture of here they can grow pretty long because this creature the cadbrosaurus um, there's no real estimate as to how long it can be it can be uh, upwards of 40 50 maybe 60 feet long well this thing the giant or fish rivals it almost and so if somebody is seeing something like this in the sea and they're not too familiar with what an or fish looks like that could be another explanation also with regard regards to the carcasses that have been found maybe even in that whaling station and then some of the other carcasses as well there's the idea that it could be another other than the carcass of an basking shark like a decomposing carcass because those apparently when they do start let's say rotting away that they in turn take on an almost mystical look like they look like something otherworldly they look like something long lost from who knows how many millions of years back it's just the way that their body decomposes the stuff uh, the the appendages the way that they start rotting away because they rot away at certain angles it makes it look like something else completely different than what it is so that's another theory as well but that's it that's most of the information associated with the Cadversaurus is still a pretty popular uh, um, cryptid there within that location up in um, northern North America. Even to this day, apparently sightings still seem to be discovered. Even in 2011, uh, there was a discovery show called Hill Stranded, and apparently they caught footage of this thing, whatever it was, uh, showcasing several minutes of that footage on the show regarding this creature so even up to most recently in the 2000s whatever this capasaurus is if there's one of them or presuming again that the carcasses are real there's a whole colony of them um, then they're still maybe out there just roaming the seas and then depending on the time of the year almost like a migration that's when they start coming back towards our area so all fascinating stuff if anyone has any more info that they like to share about good old caddy maybe if someone lives up there near that area or has visited it and knows exactly uh, more t details more information that would be really really good to hear so right everybody thanks again as always take care